and we are live guys uh, welcome to lee stafford education master classes jess what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you might have noticed that today i'm not at home uh, i'm on the move today so i've found a nice quiet little spot in the soho hotel look let me just show you where i am look so it's nice and quiet here that, and very nice, nice. Spot. jess jess is here there's jess Hi, Jess. Um, and we've got one of our very special staffs today who doesn't need any introduction, uh, YouTube star uh, and a very, very talented, uh, very, very nice guy. I know that you all know James. And today he's going to be presenting, which I'm very curious to see what James is going to do. He's going to pr present a, a mashup of The Perm. So without further ado, over to you, James, take it away. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us today, wherever you are. And um, I know it's not easy for people to give up their time to be with us here. So I appreciate that massively. Um, now, as Lee had mentioned, I'm going to do a little bit of a perm. Now, I think perms are good. I mean, I've got curly hair for any of you that remember that uh, or didn't know. That, um, and I've done a lot of perms in my life. I've done a lot of perms. I started perming hair at my grandma when I was a trainee, basically. And then all the way through my career, I've been called upon uh, to do perms, but in many different situations. And um, it's one of those things that I really enjoy the process of perming and the kind of methodical nature of it. Now, today, we're just going to focus on a particular wind that I think um, helps to kind of uh, bring the perm into a bit more of a modern space. Um, and I think, you know, we all think about perms as kind of, the, the, you know, those big, huge perms that are all brushed out and teased out and very, very, um, you know, 80s perms, if you will. Uh, so I just want to say hello to a few of the people who have jumped in. Hi, Laura. Laura, uh, I'm going to say Alex. I'm going to go with Alex, Tracy, Paula and Bon. Guys, please throw your comments into the comments section. Um, if you have anything you want to say, Lee can uh, fire it back to me. That's always a good thing. Hi, Paula. Um, and, you know, I like to interact with you guys as well. So if you have any further questions, please let me know. If you can't think of it right now, today, here as we speak, then please make sure you get in contact with Lee or myself over on social media of any kind, and we will do our bit. Now, before we start, anybody that's joined these before where it's just, you know, about this uh, environment. Hello, Bon. This is environment where, um, you know, we're in a different mode, if you like. You know, we're not necessarily in a classroom environment. We might be at home. We might be in the Soho House Hotel, like Leeds. <laughs> so, you know, we, we're not necessarily in the learning mode. So what I like to do is take away all of those uh, distractions and just focus your mind for a minute. And the way I like to do that is through the power of breathing. Now, breathing is something that we just do naturally. We don't necessarily think about, but it's a good way of energizing ourselves. It's a good way of relaxing. It's a good way of focusing. And it's a good way of doing a state change because currently, you know, we're in this state where it's two o'clock. We've had a busy day up to now. We got up late, maybe. We dropped the kids off. We rushed to work. We've done this. We've done that. Whatever we've done and to, to the point we're here right now. And we can't help it. Our psychological brain is in the back is whirring right we just need to state change so what we're going to do is a little bit of breathing it's really simple it's called pyramid breathing you've done this before if you've seen any of my sessions if you want to join in be my guest if you can hone in another way please do that so what we're going to do is going to close our eyes really simple we're going to start so simple we're going to close our eyes and we're going to listen to our own breaths we're going to breathe normally eyes closed just breathe in and out, right, just think about your breathing, nothing else, just focus wholeheartedly on your breathing. Take your mind away from everything else that's around you that you've done today. Right then, and we're gonna breathe in for one, and out for one, okay? And we're gonna breathe in for two, good work, and out for two. And we're gonna breathe in for three, and out for three. And in for four, and out for four. And we're gonna go in for five, big one, last one. And out for five, well done. And we're gonna go down, down to four. Good job. And then we're gonna go down to three, in for three. And out for three, two again. 
and one. Last breath, keep your eyes closed and just go back to your breathing. Nothing else. Just focus entirely on the breath that is leaving your mouth in any form you like. In through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your mouth, out through your mouth. <laughs> on your breathing. Nothing else. Well done, guys. For those of you who have joined in, hopefully you are now more sure centred and more present. <laughs> and you can get involved with today without being distracted mm -hmm. by everything else that's happened to you. Now, on with today's technique. Now, I've gone to the trouble of winding half of this perm already because... I felt like you weren't going to want to watch me for an hour wind a perm. So I've got uh, these perm rods. They are pretty brightly colored, green and orange perm rods. And I've done a pre-section uh, because at LSE, we always like to have a clear vision, a roadmap of where we're going to go with the technique. And we don't want to be putting them in equally piggledy and different on both sides. So this is them applied. And on this side, this is our roadmap. Okay, so we've got quadrant in the front here, rectangle section that runs through. Can anybody tell me what this bone is called in the comment section? Tell me what this bone is called in the comment section. All right. So we've got a section that runs through this bone that you're going to write in the comment section. And then through Jess the top said, the is it the occipital bone? No, oh, the occipital. Close, Jess, close. <laughs> this is the occipital bone. This one here. Hang on. This is the temple bone. Temple. That's the, the front. There's one above oh, your ear. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. It's where you, receding bone. No. Nope. It begins with a P. You haven't got a clue, have you, Jess? Hang on. Reciprocal. Parietal ridge. Parietal ridge. No, no, never, never, no. never heard of it. <laughs> okay, so this section runs through the parietal ridge. Thank you for joining in, though, Jess. I really appreciate it. This section Always. runs through the parietal ridge through to the top of the occipital bone, in between the occipital bone and the crown area. So we've got two rectangle sections in this area. We've got one in the nape area, and we've got a rectangle section here and a tiny little uh, triangle section on the crown. Now, when we cut hair, we, we utilize over direction, correct? So we utilize over yep. direction. We also use over, over direction when we're like balayaging and stuff as well. But we're gonna use a bit of over direction today in our perming technique. So what we need to do is make sure that the hair is very, very moist, okay? And um, that we don't try and perm on the hair that's dried out because it is just not easy to do. It makes the whole job, well, it just makes it awful. So keep the hair really damp. Make sure you've got that water spray to hand and that you keep the hair in a nice, even dampness. A bit like when you're cutting hair, you know? There's no point in starting a haircut with soaking wet hair and then working on the same kind of tension on both sides with wet hair and dry hair on the other side. So what we're gonna do, get this section at the front here. We're gonna get this section, we're gonna split it into two. All right, and we're gonna over direct the section towards me. Pick up all the hair, nice and simple. We're gonna grab our little piece of end paper. We're gonna wrap it around the hair like so. I've got two there, put one down, wrap it around. Now we're going to use the same size rod as we did on the previous side and we're going to slide it all the way to the end. So we're starting on a green rod, tuck our ends round and start winding our roller towards the face. So we've over directed the hair away from the face and we're winding towards the face like so. We're going to stop when we're about three inches from the root, okay? And then we're going to pop our perm rod in like so. We're gonna let this perm rod hang like that. And in fact, what you wanna make sure you've done, and it's different on both sides, is wind it the same amount of time. So I've just wound it probably once more on the opposite side. So I can see by where it sits roughly on the cheek area, whether I've wound it enough times. So let's have a little look around the front. They're both in a similar position. We're good to go. Okay, yeah. next section. We're going to get the section that we've taken from behind in this rectangle section at the front and we're going to pull the hair forward towards our body now we utilize it over direction as well because this will emphasize any root movement that we've created but we don't want big voluminous roots okay we wanted big voluminous roots back in the 80s we want to make perms usable wearable and Oh, we could bring them back into fashion. I mean, you know, the thing about perms is, providing the hair isn't heavily bleached, we can perm coloured hair as well these days with bonder additives inside them, you know, your plexes and all that jazz. 
So don't feel like you can't perm over a coloured hair. You can, because we do repair the bonds when we neutralise. We just damage them equally as much as we do when we bleach someone's hair pretty much. So we're going to let that hang. Can you see how we've got root drag on that? Yeah. Now, this is going to blow some people's minds that are watching this that are like, roll to the base. I've been there, got the T-shirt, done all those on base yeah. perm wines. All right. Now we're going to do something a bit different because if we don't do something different, it will always be there. Write it in the comment section. If we don't do something different, it will always be there. Same. Right, same. Same. Well done. <laughs> Lovely. Right, we're going to drop into the back. Right, We're going to drop into the back. We've got a rectangle section in the back here now. We're still standing to the side. So I'm on the right-hand side of my lady. We're still standing to the side of my lady. We're going to pull the hair towards me. Now this section's nice and damp still but if it wasn't then i'd make sure that i give it a good spray down before i started there's no such thing as having the hair too wet but you can definitely definitely have it too dry okay so we need the same rollers we had on the opposite side which was a green one so i'll just swap that over all right we're going to come in with our roller to the ends tuck them round wind them up and down towards the root area now remember we've got to wind to the same position so we're going to have a little look yeah, that looks about right. Clip in our roller, just like that. And James, why are we leaving the roots out and not widening it right on the base? Good question. Well, because if we wind to the base, we're going to get that look that we had in the 80s. You know, that really, really curly perm. Whereas what I want to do with this is I want to mimic what you get naturally when you've got wavy hair. So if you've got wavy hair, it's, it's not curly from the root area. You get a little bit of root drag, then you get your curl start. So if you wind it on base, you're just going to go straight back to that, you know, 80s perm look that a lot of people are there to avoid, you know. And people have sort of horror stories that they tell me about their 80s perms experiences. So if we don't do something different, if we don't change this and change people's perceptions by doing something different then we're always going to get the same result and people are not going to want their hair perming. I think perming is a fantastic technical thing to add to a technical stylist so someone that specializes in colorings or, or, or technical services like straightening is a brilliant service to add to their roster of things that they do you know you see especially um textured coily hair stylists that specialize in that they still do a lot of these type of techniques and i think you know it's because of how they educate their clients on these particular techniques and um you know if we don't educate our clients in the right way and tell them these things are available uh then obviously no one's going to want them no one's going to want to do them and the other thing is that you know if you're afraid of doing something you won't recommend it to your guests or clients because ultimately, you know, you're afraid of the process. Now, when it comes to like neutralization and stuff like that, you know, there's umpteen hundred, you know, variants of perm solution on the market. And, um, you know, I've tried quite a few and I think they all give very similar results. All you've got to do is get the right one for your client's hair texture. So if they've got quite difficult hair to, uh, to curl, quite coarse hair, you need one that's for coarse hair if they've got very um you know which is usually a zero if they've got a hair that's kind of normal texture then it's a number one or a medium to fine texture and then if they've got fragile hair it's either number two or number three depending on the brand so picking the right picking the right um picking the right perm solution is important but these days you know you've got companies like olaplex and Inolux and all these bonding companies you know, they're all advocating putting that stuff into your perm solution to help uh, reduce the damage and the breakdown of the um, hair condition as we perm. So that's really interesting to kind of go and explore and find out for by yourself, you know, on your own time. I could be here all day talking about that. Um, but there are products out there these days that really do help, you know, improve the condition as we perm. Um, I do have several clients who I do kind of different perm styles on. I've got some rods that look like a cone shape, for example. And, um, you know, they've asked me if, if it's possible 
and they've become very regular clients. They don't have colour in their hair anymore. Um, they're actually naturally grey. They don't want a granny perm. Their hair's got very fine, but they want a bit of movement in their hair. They want to wear their hair natural, uh, but textured, you know, and because their hair's got so fine and straight that um, you've got to remember also that there's a big factor, and especially we see it more and more around these parts where I'm in Brighton, loads and loads and loads and loads of people are giving up colouring their hair. You know, so to be able to offer them an extra service, a different service for those ones who are have decided that, you know, no longer do they want to go to the trouble of colouring their hair, you can really boost your final ticket with that client by offering them perm, giving them a bit of texture. So, James, yeah, why, yeah. why are they not why are they not going for colour anymore? Great question, Lee. Love that. So, so, so the reason they're not going for colour anymore is because the grey trend, you know, where you see these, um, you know, that Jack, what's his name on YouTube, on on Instagram, that, that turned Sharon Osbourne's hair grey and all that jazz. You know, these guys are creating a movement in hair that is that means that you know we're not seeing so many people that bothered by being naturally grey and actually just embracing their grey as a beautiful hair colour that it is. And actually, I'm a bit of an advocate of it in a lot of ways. You know, tinting someone's roots over and over again is good money, but it is a little boring, isn't it? You know, I would rather perm their hair uh, and give them a nice, natural, you know, textured style, mm. pixie, pixie, you know, shag-style haircut, um, than keep having to, you know, touch up their roots every five minutes because you've got mm. such a strong, strong contrast. And I think people also, lockdown played a big, um, uh, mm. you know, part in, 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 in the mentality of people and their, you know, hair colour and how it is maintained, etc. So I think that has, you know, been a, a, a not a major issue, but an issue of, mm. uh, you know, why people aren't so bothered these days. Gotcha. So I'm just going to um, give you a little heads up. We've got our rows in here. Now, when we're working, I'm going to swap sides actually. When we're working on this top section, I'm still going to stand to the side. So I'm going to comb my roots out. I'm going to take a horizontal section, a bit like when you might put in uh, a, a roller, for instance, or did roll backwards. Right, I'm going to stand to the side of my section, pull the hair towards me, Okay, I'm going to put my perm rod in that way. Okay, so the same rules apply, nothing changes. In with our end paper. And we're going to make sure we use the same size rods, all that jazz, you know, self explanatory stuff, but important to remember. Um, come to the ends and then hook it round and wind it up towards the face. There's a question that I had on the screen there, Lee. Did you, did you read it to me, mate? Yes, I certainly can. There's a few questions here, buddy. There's um, Laura says, What's been your worst experience with perming? Oh, my worst experience with perming. Well, my worst experience with perming was when I, when I did my grandma's hair for probably the third or fourth time. And um, I did it all and it all looked great. And, you know, I, took, I, I put my perm solution on and I took one out and I checked for the bend and I did all that jazz. And then, um, and then, and then I, I neutralized it and everything seemed hunky-dory. My grandma's hair is baby fine and poker straight, but it's quite resistant to um, perms. Anyway, went to, you know, wash it all off and it was pretty much as straight as when, um, I, before I permed it. It had a little bit of a bend in it. Now, I, I did get to the bottom of it in the end. It was a different perm solution to the one that we'd used previously. She'd always bought the perm solution and, um, and I this time said to her, well, I'll buy the perm solution and um, I bought one for her hair type and uh, it wasn't the right one because she used to buy one for resistant hair. So that right. was my worst experience because it's so deflating, isn't it? You know, oh, it's so God, deflating. Yeah. You've, put, you're, you've got these perfect little rollers. You've got them all lovely. You think it's all going hunky dory. You've done all the appropriate checks. And Bob's your uncle. You take it out and it's not even there. So that's yeah. the worst one for, by far. At least Bob's it was on the ground. Yeah, do you, did you have you experienced a lot of sort of redos with perms over the years? Not really, no, not really. No. I, 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 um, they're difficult to redo in a lot of ways sometimes, especially if the hair condition's a bit fragile, you know. 
uh, because obviously they're more dangerous than um, when you bleach your hair, for sure. Um, you know, they do more damage to the hair than bleaching it. Um, but I haven't done that many redos, providing you're studious and you go back and you check that your curl is, you know, set and you've got the right and you and you neutralize it for the appropriate amount of time, providing you go through all the steps. I don't mm. generally have any problems with it. Um, gotcha. And I think, like I was saying before, guys, that if you aren't perming right now, as this trend of people not coloring their gray hairs grows, you're going to see the demand for perms increase. Um, but you're going to what they're going to all the people that have asked me about it have asked me exactly the same thing every single time. How do I have a perm that doesn't look like it did when I had my hair permed in the 80s because they had them all done the first time round. So mm. I think it's you know it is a winner. It is a winner financially. It's a winner, um, and it is well worth getting your head into even if you think you've got no need for it. So tell me this. Um... I mean, they've been talking about perms coming back since I started in hairdressing, it seems. Yes. Um, and maybe the problem uh, is that it's difficult to perm on top of a lot of colour. But do you, right. think, do you think that the fact that not so many people are colouring their hair might finally give the perm its, uh, its comeback? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I think, it, you know, it's one of those skills where... It's like, it's like doing that roller set I did for you, Lee. It's like a mm. skill that everyone goes, oh, what's the point in that? But when it comes back yeah. in fashion, you're then learning on the back foot. Get ahead of the game. Yeah. Get in early. You know, like when Balayage came around, right? I saw yeah. Barry, uh, Drew Barrymore on the red carpet of the Oscars with a dip dye in uh, 2014, 13, right? And I yeah. saw it and I thought, that's a bit of me, that is. I'll give that a go, right? So I was already yeah. in that kind of frame of mind, yeah? And then mm. all of a sudden, the, the techniques started to evolve. They became much more commercial, became much more usable. And that's why I was teaching the classes at Redkin before anybody else, because I'd already been doing it by that at that point for five years, mm. and everyone thought it was brand new, you know? Yeah. And I was so you think, Drew, you think, you think Drew, Drew Barrymore was... Um... She instigated it, yeah? The dip dye that Drew Barrymore had was really, for me, the first time I ever even considered doing anything like right. that to anyone's hair. So for me, yeah, for me, it was the moment that I thought, hello, there's more to this than just root tints and highlights. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. You know? There's some more, there's some more questions here, mate. We've, right. got, um, we've got Tracy says, um, how long does it take you to get your perm in Rod's head? Uh, well, how long we've we been on air? Twenty-three minutes. I've been talking yeah. and waffling and all that jazz. I could get this in in half an hour if I went full tilt. Uh, so, final section here is that triangle section on the top that I mentioned. Um, and all I do with this triangle section is I take the section and uh, simply just split it into two. So, yeah, if we were going all out, you know, with half an hour, thirty-five minutes for this type of wind, it's a bit like a spiral perm. This guy's for anybody that. Um, remembers the old school stuff that we used to do or you know it came around in the 80s i wasn't actually around the first time around but i have studied perming quite extensively just because i'm one of those people that like to know a bit of hair history you know i'm a bit of a hair historian mm. and um you know i like to know what happened uh, uh in the past well, give, us a bit of, give us a bit of history on it then, James, on the well, perm. I guess the history of perming, you know, is, 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 that, is that, you know, people were looking for ways to kind of, you know, create movement and texture, etc. that were, I mean, originally people were using them for volume and texture, you know, when you're doing little sets, you know, we're going way, way mm. back, you know. But then they emanated into longer and longer hair types, you know, to sort of emulate actually what was, an Afro-Caribbean style, you know, which was when this in the 70s, the fro was very popular, mm, mm. you know, and then all of a sudden you had white people doing to their hair what black people had naturally, you know, yeah. which I find fascinating. That blows my mind. And I think that's really a wonderful thing. And I think we need more of that in the hair culture today that the acceptance of and the and the and the kind of uh, I guess today we might get caught out with cultural appropriation, but I don't, you know, maybe I'm going a bit far, but only only based on some of my experiences 
communicating online with the curly hair culture and community that is around um, African descent hair textures. But, you know, I think that's, um, and so we had this, you know, trend of having your hair big and full, and it was kind of a, you know, a white man's Afro effectively. Um, and then of course, what happened in that period, then we got into the eighties, people started coloring their hair more intensively. They were much more full on with their um, hair uh, coloring techniques and the highlights evolved and, and, and we went from ju not just doing cap highlights, but to foil highlights and the, and, the, and the techniques started to get a bit more involved. And then that's when we started to see people's condition of their hair deteriorate um, from the use of perms. And it was more beneficial to the manufacturers to promote coloring because coloring could be done much more regularly. The products were yeah. come out much more expensive, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And so therefore it wasn't in the, in the best interest of the brands to, to want to promote a product that wasn't that repeatable. If you like, you know, a perm, mm. you have to wait how many weeks before you can perm it again, three months. But with a colour, you can come back in six weeks and have your roots touched up. Yeah. So do you think the brands are going to resist the perm? I think unless, and you know, and only, I think the only reason that the, 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 the Inoluxes and the, and, the, and the Olaplexes aren't resisting the perm on their literature, on their packaging, is because, you know, it's an added benefit of their product. But the, but the big brands, you know, the L'Oreal's, the, the, the Goldwell's, the, all these guys that still make perms to this day because there is a market for it, uh, not a big market, nothing like their colour business, I think they will resist it until there's a product that is out there that um, can both be on, um, you know, curly, you can perm someone's hair and simultaneously colour their hair. Yeah. I don't think it will be a thing. But here's the thing, right? About five years ago, I was invited to L'Oreal. Um, was, there was an email that went around um, to all of the kind of people who were working for L'Oreal at the time in the technical department. And they said, can you perm? It was just a general sort of question that they, I think they were looking for somebody because there wasn't anybody to come forward. And so I put my hand up and said, yes, I can perm. And I was invited to L'Oreal for the day. And I did a perm on somebody with pl platinum bleached hair, right? And they took photos and it was all very, very white bottles and all that jazz. Nothing ever came of that product. I never saw it again, but her hair didn't fall out. The condition looked amazing. I don't know whether there's some of the um, legalities of Olaplex and um, L'Oreal, uh, you know, and that and that and that lawsuit that happened where L'Oreal had copied Olaplex too closely, played out into the the demise of that product, and it never came to market. But I thought, hello, this is it now. We're gonna we're gonna go, you know, because if I've just permed someone's hair that's had their hair bleached white, and I've just chucked a perm over it and their hair looks amazing, uh, then surely we're off with, the, off with the fairies and so that will be the time when it will really take off and don't get me wrong that will happen that will happen because it will be in the vested interest of these companies to work it out mm. they're clearly working on it it's just mm. not hit the masses it's just not yeah. got the product quite right or the products in cringing trademarks of other products or whatever the problems are but they're looking for it and when they find it it will be there um how often do you get people asking for a permanent salon never Never, 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 never get anybody asked for a perm in my salon and all of the salons that ever worked in. And the main reason why is because of because of stylist education, right? Lots of stylists don't want to do them. Lots of stylists don't know how to do them. Lots of stylists are scared of them, right? So we're not going to get many stylists educating their clients that they're available. However, mm. as I mentioned to you previously, lots of my clients have gone natural with their hair color, whether it be gray natural or just grown out their balayage and not had it replaced. So I've started to educate my clients that there's other things available to them, like soft perms like this, which I'll talk about that in just a second, right? That are out there for them, that are not that 80s perm that they're so afraid of, but a really good result for a little bit of movement that just grows out, mm. it's low commitment. They love it. They're in for it. You know, it's mm. 200 quid in my shop, you know, and, and, and away you go. And uh, stick a haircut on top of that and it's 270, 280, whatever depends on how long their hair is. So, you know, it just, it does, it does factor into it and it's quite a quick service. So mm. um, I think all in all, you know, there are ways to teach our clients about things that aren't necessarily trending, but are good for our clients. Mm. Talk, I'll tell you what I saw, maybe uh, 
couple of years back what I thought was really inspiring as far as the perm goes. And it just shows you that things come back in very, very different shapes and forms to when they you know, were around last time. Did you see that meet me at McDonald's when all the young yeah. school kids were having their yeah. hair like the faded cut. around it yeah. and then they were having it all permed on yeah. top? It looked, yeah. it looked great. Didn't it? And they were all yeah. getting expelled from school and suspended yeah. because of these haircuts. I mean, it was proper punk rock, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I, I, I've done a few of those actually in the last yeah. you know, few years uh, on my clients' kids and stuff. You know, um, I call it the broccoli cut um, because yeah. they look like broccoli. But, um, you know, it's it's it, yeah of course and of course these things will always be around and they'll always emanate into different directions it's like the cali curl stuff that's happening at the moment if anyone's seen that go and go and google that on uh after what is this. that guys? cali curl is this like a californian beach wave perm um, right. and it's kind of sort of taking off in america at the moment um so yeah it's it's one of those things that, that that you do need to kind of obviously keep your eye out for things that might you know blow up there's another one in america that you have to go to new york to learn the technique before they will supply you the product i can't remember the name of it but that's out there too uh the perm rod r rubbers can leave marks in the hair if not be careful uh, any advice to avoid this happening yeah so one of the things that you can do and actually um as you go through the technique and i've got some here Thank you for reminding me because I actually forgot to talk about this. So uh, whoever that was, Paula, you're a hero. Okay, one of the things that you can do as you go through the technique is that you can put a, a, a little pin, a plastic pin, into the into the uh, elastic like that, and then you can clump together three or four rods like that, and that will also just give them a little bit of root support as you go through, and you can go through and do that to all of the sections, and that will keep the band away from the hair as it processes so thank you for that paula and i'd just like to say a big shout out to paula because paula was the winner and runner-up of our level three lse competition and paula won student of the year so wow big shout paula. Out to you paula hero material well done yeah any other questions lee uh we no we're uh we're all up to speed guys have you got any questions uh, please put it in the chat. Anything for James about, you know, the perming or anything else, please feel free. Jess, Jess has got a question. Go on, Jess. Go on, Jess. Yeah. Hi. Can you perm bleached blonde hair? That's what we've just been talking oh, about. Oh, really? Yeah. We just, <laughs> we, I'll answer your question there, Jess, because it will be, The thing about perm solution is it's stronger than bleach, right? Um, and so it does pretty much exactly the same thing. It breaks down bonds within the hair. It dissolves bonds, but we reform them when we do a perm, right? So we put a, we put <laughs> a solution on at the end uh, that is an oxidant that reforms the bonds that we've broken down. When we are bleaching hair, we don't necessarily, we can't re necessarily rebuild those bonds and we've broken them down. So if a product came about and I did a perm on someone with as much bleach as you've got um, at L'Oreal a few years ago with a product that wasn't to market yet and it made her hair feel and look just as good as when I started if, if not felt a little bit better when products like that come around yes Jessica you can have a perm and you can be like all bleachy <laughs> and stuff right but until then until then you know, we, the, the, bo the bonders the bonders that are around do help that um, you know preventing it from breaking down Olaplex Inalux all those K18 right the thing is, obviously, when you want to get that color refreshed or if you want to change that color, you've done those chemical services. It's an accumulative effect. Let's say that bleach broke your hair 30 percent. Right. Then this breaks it 30 percent. And then you've only got 30 percent of the strength left. Right. So I think you need to get on it and create some sort of. Bonding well, you know, in the mainly we could go for a coffee. We could talk about it. You know. <laughs> We'll get, we'll get it sorted out this afternoon, okay. Jay. We'll crack that one. <laughs> I'll, 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 be your, I'll be your guinea pig. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. With you. Um, Thank I just you. saw a question there, Laura asked, what's my favourite perming technique? Well, anything that looks natural, uh, uh, Laura, anything that emulates natural hair or the natural curl in the hair, um, you know, I don't want it to look uh, forced or undone or... Um, you know, I, I, I want it to have that, that lived in feel. Anyway, let's talk about this technique, right? So we've got all the sections wound, yeah? So now we put perm solutions on every roller. We'd allow that to then soften the hair. 
So if you think about it like this, this is a good way of I was thought about it. If you get a piece of spaghetti, it's hard and it's rigid and etc. And it's in its, you know, when we put it in boiling water, it goes soft. Yeah. That's a bit like what happens when we put perm solution onto somebody's hair. Yeah. The, 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 the hair goes soft and malleable, right? Once it's done its job, we then rinse it all off very, very thoroughly. We can't leave any uh, of that solution on the hair. And then we put a neutralizer, an oxidant on the hair, right? And the oxygenation happens where we then start to reform the dust sulfide bonds, the hydrogen bonds, and the um, brain's gone dead. Dust sulfide bonds, hydrogen bonds, and uh... anyway, brain's gone dead. The main bonds <laughs> are hydrogen bonds, right? The yeah. hydrogen bonds have to reform into that set shape. So it would be the equivalent of getting that limp piece of uh, spaghetti, wrapping it around a, a chopstick and leaving it to dry. And then your, your piece mm. of spaghetti would be all curly. And that's all mm. you're really redoing is you're breaking down hydrogen disulfide bonds with a perm solution to reset them. Sodium bonds, sodium bonds, there we go. Sodium bonds are the bronze that, uh, you know, break down by pH. So shampoo, for example. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that, that we push the hair backwards and forwards. Now, the further and more times we repeat that process, the more likely we are to get breakage. A bit like a chemical straightener. It's very, very similar to a chemical straightener. It's just in reverse. There are some slightly different things at play. However, when we do a chemical straightener, uh, the, we, we actually break away 30% of the hair structure regardless because we are breaking down a whole series of the bonds. But anyway, we won't go into that because it's just going to go off topic too deep. But that is basically what we're doing. So once we've done that process, okay, and here's one I made earlier. We get something with this particular technique that's like this, right? So we can see, let me get out the line. We can see that we've got root drag and then we've got curls, okay? So I've let this dry naturally um, with a, um, there's a little bit of flexible mousse mixed with conditioner to get this kind of curl definition in it. And then I've got a little bit of, um, what is this stuff? Anti, anti fade serum. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab the hair in a ponytail and I'm going to work it through my curls and then I'm going to use my fingers just like a, like a big comb, okay, just to break up and pull down any of the curl in the hair that we just want to free out. And so here so it's it is. quite similar, James. It's quite similar to kind of the twisted tongue in the sense of Very leaving similar a lot of rag. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes. You could, you know, like yeah. you say in the twisted tongue recipe, Lee, it's more modern where we leave it straighter to the top of the ear. Yeah. You know? And that's yeah. something that you, that you, that you emphasise in that twisted tongue technique, right? And I think that's the same for this. We don't necessarily, we can get a bit of volume in there because we did it, you know, we've got those, those um, clips in there that help to lift it up to the root area. But we just go in, give the roots a little massage with our fingers like this. And we can see the swell that's happening here already, right? We're getting that hair to swell up. You know, because I don't think curls need to be absolutely smooth for them to look nice. You know, we need a little bit of texture in there, you know, a mm. little bit of something going on. And that's why that little bit of mousse in there really helps with the uh, with that little bit of volume. So we're going to go in, give the roots a nice massage through like that, just using my fingers in exactly the same way. A bit of friction technique, right? And then come in at this front area, lift up this front area, give it a little swizzle at the roots. And just mm -hmm. because that little bit of mousse is in there, and it's only a little bit, and the mousses these days don't set hard. You I mean you've got some great mousses, haven't you, Lee? You know, mm, you can really yeah. get your hands in there. You can move it around afterwards, and it's not like concrete, and it's not going to set uh, in a way that you can't uh, manipulate it afterwards and separate out a few of the strands if they're looking a bit bulky, you know, a bit chunky. And then just give it a little tease with the hands, and then make sure that you're happy with the shape. And then uh, that will stay like that, wet, dry, in the rain, wherever you like, whenever you like, whoever you like. And that's it. Nice modern adaptation of having the traditional perm done. The spiral perm with a little bit of a twist. Mm, very nice. That looks, I mean, it looks modern, doesn't it? Yes. By not perming it right to the root, it definitely yes. gives it 
a 21st century feeling. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's giving it, gives it a completely different vibe, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So um, that's that basically. Nice and simple. Oh, that yeah. was easier than we thought it was going to be, guys, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. So we, we, um, we normally do a competition, James. Yes. Uh, and we give away um, a Lee Stafford goodie bag um, or a goodie box, should we say. Have you got a competition question for the students? Oh, competition question. What oh. would be a competition question? Can, can it be question? really obscure? Can it be really obscure? Because you can go and it look can... this one up, but it's really obscure. Yeah. So it's right. the first one that comes back with the answer, right? Okay, cool. Right, ready? What date did I post my first YouTube video on? Right. What date did James Atkinson <laughs> post his first like... ever YouTube video? And and just, I mean, look, that, that, while everyone's sort of coming back with some um, some dates, James, just give us a little bit of an overview to the students on since that first post, um, what's happened in your life since you started posting on YouTube? Give us a little snapshot of it. Um, what's happened in my life? Wow. Well, it's changed completely. My, yeah. my life is not the same as it was. Uh, before that first YouTube video, I was uh, I was doing stuff for Redkin and I was kind of involved in education. I knew you, Lee, and I was doing stuff for LSE. But um, I was just always working with other people, right? Yeah. And, um, and uh, it's one of those things where I always wanted to be a part of a brand, working alongside a brand rather than within a brand. Um, and I, the only way I could ever fathom that would be to become something that was not equal to the brands that I wanted to work with, but I had my own thing to bring to the table, my own... Um, you know, unique selling point, if you like. And so um, one of the things that I started to do to try and set me apart was creating videos. Um, and it was kind of in that process of creating videos and, and doing things that all of a sudden started to see all these things change. So the first thing that changed was that I kind of got enough followers to get paid by YouTube. Um, which was kind of a big milestone because it was only a few dollars a day to start with, but it quickly built. Um, but it meant that I could buy a new camera. It meant that I could buy all these things to like level up the level up the the the, 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 the videos and, and buy a new laptop and do all these things, right? And then all of a sudden, I was like, okay, well, I'm earning enough money now that I don't actually need to do hair on clients anymore. But I love it, so I'm not going to stop doing hair on clients. What I'm going to do is um, is I'm going to open a, a, my own studio where I can work on my own. So that's where we are now. We're in my studio. Um, and, you know, brands and different people have come to me and, and, and some of my hair heroes have reached out to me and said, love what you're doing. So it's been a real connection to the industry in a way that I would have never have achieved before. Mm. I've connected with people who I would have never have acknowledged me, would have known nothing about me. They live in the States. There's no way I'd have ever have got to them. And mm. it's just really been about kind of helping people grow their careers, helping them earn more money because I'm money focused, right? I'm money first because I think not too many people dance around the money idea in this industry that, you know, mm. uh, money's a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. It's not a, it's not a charity. OK, it's, it's our job and we should get paid for it effectively and efficiently and well. OK, so mm. I'm always money first. And then, of course, time went on and I got a decent following. So I started the Digital Academy stuff and then I've helped loads of people kind of level up, you know, from um, kind of bringing in a, 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 a decent amount of money, but trying to push them into the kind of the six figure stylist category, where if you work in five days a week and you're doing eight hours a day or, or, or there or thereabouts that on 60 pounds an hour, you can finish the year on, on 100 thousand pound plus. James, do you, mind, do you mind if I just butt in there? Because I know that you did some amazing podcasts where you were interviewing hairdressers that were earning six figures. Would you just like to right. share with the students so they can go and listen to it? Of course you can, yes. Yeah. So um, there's a few up there now, and it's called The Indie Stylist. It's on uh, Apple iTunes. It's on um, Instagram. It's on, um, what's that one? Spotify. It's on loads of the platforms um, that you can listen to. So if you, if you search the, the Indie Stylist, um, and it's a Life of Hair production on there, uh, there's. I've just 
uh, doing some more actually that I filmed back then or I recorded back then that I'm now releasing more. Um, and yeah, I found loads of people. In fact, I found seven figure stylists um, wow. in, in, in major cities. Um, now, this is the thing though, guys, right? Don't believe that six figure stylist is in a major city. Don't believe it, right? All the people that I spoke to, one of the main criteria was they weren't in a major city. And if they were in a major city, they had to be doing five hundred, four hundred thousand dollars or uh, 150 plus thousand pounds turnover in a major city. It wasn't, I wanted people that were everyday people that lived in normal places that were doing six figures and I found loads of them. So for anybody that tells wow. you that's not a belief, not achievable, it's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. I found a woman, right, mm. who was in England. She had a, a, a tiny little uh, studio shed in her garden. She was doing six figure turnover in a rural environment, attracting clients from miles and miles around amazing. wow amazing yeah you know okay no... we've got go on amazing go on what about the what about the seven figure stylist what, what what were they doing well this 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 guy this guy um was uh just an amazing guy he was an la hairstylist yeah. and he had built up this you know very wealthy clientele and he worked for big brands and etc etc um over in america but he was saying that his clientele alone, if he did nothing else, that he was doing seven figures as a hairstylist dollars, right? Wow. So he was doing about one point eight, one point one million eighty thousand pounds dollars a year as a salon stylist, charging over one thousand one hundred dollars an hour for his services. Wow! I mean, absolutely insane. And he was a wow. colorist, and he was absolutely killing it smashing we've got, it we've got a winner by the way on the oh old, yeah uh, on the old thing who have we got, amber who have we got? 6th of june amber. 2018 oh yeah well done okay amber so if you could get your um your uh, lecturer to send me a little email um telling me what kind of hair you've got and we'll get that goodie box out to you straight away so thanks james well done, another a, another wonderful master class as usual my friend uh thank you all for watching um, have a wonderful week uh, and we will see you next week. Next so, week. Take Cheers care, everybody. Thanks a lot, guys. Look after yourselves. Bye, Appreciate the time. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, James. Cheers, Lee. Bye-bye. Bye, mate.